Okay, wait, I'm filming. Can I just finish this? I'm very stressed already. Let's get our aircon. Yeah, please close the door and let me film in peace. Uh, I'm, gonna, oh. I'm gonna leave in, a, I mean, like, in an hour. No, you need to do my uh, no, thumbnail right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it after I sure. Okay, can I finish this? But I have a question. What? Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. If it's the first time that you've tuned in, please do hit that subscribe button and help me grow my YouTube family. <laughs> Okay, so today's topic is very close to my heart, okay, because it's something that I'm currently experiencing or having, have been experiencing for the past couple of years. So this topic may not really be very applicable to most of my subscribers because a lot of my subscribers are young, okay, in their 20s young. So I think this video is more for my friends, if indeed my friends actually watch my YouTube videos, but yes, it is more suited for my friends. However, 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 if you are watching and you're one of my subscribers, this is going to be very helpful for you as well because this is going to prepare you for what is inevitably going to happen. <laughs> so today, I am going to be spilling the truth about aging. What women start to go through when they start to age once they hit their 40. You know, somewhat it has been an uncomfortable topic for me because I think up until this moment, I haven't really like faced I haven't like faced reality that I am aging but you know you get to a point wherein you really have to acknowledge that okay you've reached a certain age and you have to do some reflection and you have to like be more concerned about your future and so this is my first time really addressing even my age on my social media platforms so before I can go on any further and get into the topic it's time for my age reveal <laughs> I mean, it would be pretty ridiculous if I was talking about aging and you, my subscribers, didn't know how old I actually am. So this is it. This is my age reveal. Guys, I am 42 years old. Okay, so my birthday is in April. So if you are watching this April 2020 onwards, I'm already 43. Wow. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is that I remember that when I turned 30, I felt so old. I was like, oh my god, my life is like totally downhill from here. <laughs> Like, you know, goodbye 20s, goodbye to my youth, and I'm now 30. But when I hit my 40s, when I hit 40, that was something else, okay? And I'm going to be talking about that. So, yep, the truth about aging and what you should be doing in your 20s to prepare better for when you turn 40. Let's get into it. So I'm going to be talking about everything, all of the physical changes and also all of the realizations that you have once you hit 40 one by one and then afterwards i'm going to speak to you guys who are still in your 20s or 30s and going i'm going to give you tita advice okay <laughs> on how to like take precautions to how to age better okay so two years ago i turned 40 and let me tell you when you turn 40 things happen very very quickly okay it's not a joke and it is real when people tell you that when you reach 40 everything slows down physically and a lot of things change in your body it's true whatever you're reading is true so physically a lot of things really change things that you never like felt in your 30s that were starting to change and then when you hit 40 suddenly you see all of the changes and i'm not even joking like once you reach 40 like the aging really accelerates <laughs> the aging really goes so much faster than in your 30s so let me tell you about some of the physical changes that you can expect the first thing and the most common thing, I guess, especially for us Filipinos, is the slowdown, slowing down of your metabolism, okay? So it is true that as we age, most of us Filipinos gain weight. And it's not that when you turn 40, suddenly you gain so much weight. Of course, you're accumulating that already in your 30s. But most of us really, like most of my friends, most of the people that I know, I mean, Filipinos in particular, we gain weight when we get older. And if it was hard for you to lose weight in your 20s or your 30s, oh man, it is going to be so hard for you when you reach your 40s. Okay, even in your early 40s. I mean, I'm still in my very early 40s and it is so different. It is so difficult to lose weight. So when I was younger, when I was in my 20s and even my 30s, I just have to diet for around two weeks and I would drop those pounds like really easily. Okay, that's why like, I mean, my, my entire adult life has been my yo my weight has been like yo-yo i've been really fat i've been thin i've been in between but when i was younger once i really had the determination to lose weight i really could easily lose weight but now with like 101 percent determination and everything it is difficult okay and it takes time second physical change that you're going to experience is a change in your eyesight hands down this happens to all of my friends and it happened to me 
maybe it happened gradually like in our 30s but definitely me and all of my friends once we hit 40 eyesight got really bad okay if you had bad eyesight before it's gonna get worse Okay, if you didn't have bad eyesight before, it will become bad. <laughs> or basically, you're gonna have all sorts of issues with your eyes, okay, with your sight, with your vision. You may need to start wearing glasses, you may need progressive glasses like a lot of my friends do. You may start to get astigmatism, but definitely your eyesight is gonna go down the drain, ladies and gentlemen, once you hit 40. Thirdly, your skin. Okay, so obviously there is going to be a lot of changes in your skin and that's because you're not producing the same amount of collagen that you used to, you don't have that same kind of elasticity, it's going to start to sag, you're gonna, you're gonna start to see fine lines or even wrinkles around the eyes and elsewhere. So I think because like we are Asians, we are a little bit lucky in this department, we don't age as fast as Caucasians do, especially like Europeans. We age a lot slower than them, so like the lines on our face, the wrinkles and everything, they don't really come until we're a lot more mature, I guess. And I guess it's person, I guess it's a case-to-case -case basis as well. Like you will see, I don't really have a lot of lines um, yet. Although like around my eyes, when you when I look close up in the mirror, I can see lines around my eyes, like especially when I do this, right? Like you can see lines here and lines there. Um, some people have more. Some people have less. I always think like it's a little bit of an advantage if you have a round face and if you have a chubby face <laughs> because it makes you look younger and I think like the lines are less apparent. And another thing with skin is that it starts to get a lot drier than it actually was. Okay, for me, I, I don't experience this as much as my other friends do. My other friends um, are always saying how their skin is so much more dry than it was before because my skin type is oily, it's oily combination. So I don't really experience a lot of dryness on my skin. And I have been taking good care of my skin since I was young. So I can say that in general, I do have good skin, I think for my age. However, 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 what I do have that has gotten a whole lot worse and that's also my fault is pigmentation. Okay, so if you're a lady that is prone to pigmentation like freckles and brown spots, then when you were in your 20s, you really should be taking care of that. Um, when I was in my 20s, when I was in my early 20s, and even as a teenager, let me tell you, I love to tan myself. Okay, I really liked being tan. I am not one of those girls who wanted to be fair and white. I wanted to be tan all the time. Like, I will literally sunbathe. And when I sunbathe, like, I didn't even protect my skin with SPF because, like, I noticed that when I sunbathe and I apply sun protection, I don't tan. So I really would not wear any protection at all. And that's, you know, due to ignorance as well. I didn't know that. I just really wanted to be tanned. And I didn't realize that I am so prone to pigmentation and... So today, I really have a lot of pigmentation that I have to cover up with full coverage foundations and I have to use so many anti-dark spot serums and creams and skincare. Like, I'm always warning my daughters about this, like, please stay out of the sun because, like, especially my eldest daughter, China, she loves to tan herself as well. She doesn't like being fair. I know we're both weird this way that we're so, like, most Asians like to be fair, but, like, the two of us, we, we feel like we look um, European, <laughs> you know, like Italian or something when we're tan. So she also loves to tan herself. She doesn't like being fair or white. She likes being dark. And I keep having to remind her, like, you know, you're going to develop pigmentation. And she's all like, I don't care, YOLO, and I want to be dark. But, well, then we're going to see China what your skin's going to look like in, like, 20 years. <laughs> Another thing about the skin is that obviously it's gonna start to sag. Yeah, sadly, you know, so like, you know how you were, when you're in your 20s, your skin is like very tight, your face is like a V-shape, you know, your jaw is still like very tight. <laughs> but as you age, and especially when you reach 40, you are really going to see visible signs of sagging. Your V-shape is going to become a U, yes. And you are going to see like your former double chin. It's not gonna be a double chin. It's just gonna be like sagging skin underneath your chin. Basically, gravity is really going to start pulling your skin down, sadly. Another thing that is still in the physical department is your physical endurance. Oh boy, is it gonna slow down. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> okay, you are going to be tired a lot. Trust me, you don't have to wait until you're 50 or 60 to feel tired. When you're 40, you're gonna feel tired a lot. You just don't have that kind of energy anymore, like compared to when you were 20 or 30. You are going to want to sleep earlier. I know, lola lola, but yes, you're gonna want to sleep earlier. You also wake up a bit earlier. And unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to sleep as well as you did when you were young. I know that sounds so sad, but it's true. I mean, I don't know for everybody who's turning 40, but it's certainly true for myself and also for my friends. Okay, the last physical change or physical thing that you might be experiencing, 
I think it is particularly just for women, but it is the hormonal imbalance. Oh man, it can go crazy. Like uh, the mood swings and everything. I'm not talking about um, menopause, okay? I think it's a bit too early to talk about that, okay? I mean, most women don't go through with menopause in their early 40s. I think that's like in their early 50s, maybe. I'm not sure. But there will be some major hormonal change. Actually, you know, for me, I, I didn't quite experience that. I'm not sure why. Maybe because like my hormones were crazy in my 30s. Um, that, you know, I was spared of all of the hormonal imbalance already when I hit 40. But a lot of my friends have experienced that. Um, hormonal imbalance, it can be in the form of depression or just like severe mood swings. Um, and you have to be prepared for that if you're a woman and expect that to happen. Hopefully it won't. But it's a different case for different people. Okay, so I've talked about like the physical changes. Now I'm going to tackle like what happens mentally when you reach 40. You know, I can say that your 40th birthday is going to be completely different from any other birthday that you've ever had. <laughs> because when you reach your 40th birthday, you have so many realizations, okay? You are literally at the middle of your life, in the middle of your life. Some of you may have, may start to have like an ex existential crisis, <laughs> midlife crisis. Or just like really start to reflect on what you have achieved in life so far and what you want to happen for the rest of your life. So this is certainly something that I experienced when I turned 40 and more so when I turned 41. You are really going to start to wonder, am I prepared? Am I prepared for my golden years? Am I prepared for retirement? Do I have enough savings? Have I achieved everything that I want to achieve in life? Are my children okay? What kind of legacy am I starting to build for them? Or do I even have a legacy to leave behind? Yes, you are definitely gonna start thinking these deep thoughts. And you know what, that is somewhat also why I started this vlog. It is somewhat like my midlife crisis kind of thing. Because you know when I turned 41, I realized, not 40, because I was really busy when I, was four, when I turned 40, but when I turned 41, I was like, my God, you know, all these years have really passed by me. My children are grown, they're, they're doing okay, but what have I done for myself? Like, really nothing. I've worked my butt off to provide for them and to make a good life for all of us. And I've worked my butt off raising them so that, you know, they can be well-rounded people. I mean, all humility aside, okay? I really worked hard on my children. Like, everything that I got, I really, like, poured into them so that they could be well-rounded human beings who would not repeat the same mistakes that I did in my life. So all my energy is really what I poured out to them in my in my 30s especially to give them a good life and to make sure that they are good people. To the point that, you know, I really didn't do anything for myself. I've never pursued a hobby, really. When I was young, I always wanted to be an actress, okay? I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to, when I was in my teens, when I was in or my early 20s, that was the dream. I wanted to be an actress. Like a theater actress or a Broadway actress okay that was really the dream and i didn't pursue that because i had a family early i had children early and it wasn't making money it wasn't money making so i had to pursue like a corporate co career so basically i mean long story short when i turned 41 i was like i have to do something for me because like i just might like die you know without having done anything fulfilling for myself and since i got into like makeup earlier on and everything and I do have passion for it I love makeup and I like talking you know obviously in front of the camera so yeah, that was how blogging came about so it's real my blogging for me is really not about making money or being a big time blogger it's really about having a hobby and doing something for myself <laughs> you know for fulfillment so you are going to reflect on these things you are also going to be thinking about your future okay like your golden years or your retirement to be honest I've only started thinking about that now now that I'm 42 I didn't really think about that when I was 40 and it's Probably also because I have I have too much of a YOLO kind of mentality that in my 30s and even in my 20s, I have never really thought about what is going to happen to me when I'm like in my 60s or when I can't work anymore. And it's only now that I have really started to think about that. And that is a regret, okay? I should have started preparing already like in my 20s, okay? When I hit maturity, when I hit adulthood. I should have already started preparing but as I said I, I do have regrettably a bit of a YOLO mentality. Something else is that you may have a little bit of a hard time facing reality that your youth has indeed gone. Your youth is no more and you are already in your 40s and you are already nearing those golden years. For me I think it really helps if you have children. Uh, they keep you young so like in spirit I still feel young mostly because of them because I'm always I'm always with them and they're they influence me a lot okay. I'm 
not a believer also in like acting your age. Why should you act your age? Is there a rule that you must act your age? <laughs> I mean, just be true to yourself. And the funny, I wouldn't say that I'm in denial that I'm already like past 40 years old. I mean, here I am telling all of you that I'm already 42. But of course, like we'll, we'll always be joking about it. And in fact, like my son only found out my true age, I think a year ago. I had always been lying to him <laughs> and telling him that I was like 30. And he believed it because he was still young. But I think like last year, probably more than a year ago, he finally figured it out when he started calculating China's age and my age. And he was like, that's impossible. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you got me. So he found out my age. But you know, you joke about your age and everything. You joke about being old and being a lola already. Um, but in in reality, in the back of your head, it kind of does scare you, you know. It, I mean, you see the physical changes and everything and you know that your youth is completely behind you and you should have achieved a certain something already at this age and you should be well prepared already for your retirement and you should have achieved like the maximum level of success already. It does kind of scare you. So yeah, that's the reality of it. So if I could go back to my 25 year old self, if I could speak to my 25 year old self, what would I say so that I can be better prepared for aging? First of all, physically, what I would tell myself is get out of the sun, stop tanning yourself. It ain't cute, <laughs> okay? Uh, it ain't cute and your skin, you are going to develop a lot of pigmentation. So get out of the sun, girl. Secondly, well, I continue with my good skincare, obviously. I tell myself, continue uh, don't give up on that be diligent with your skincare about the weight i tell myself to stop the crash dieting okay stop all of those extreme things that you are doing to lose weight just lead a more healthy lifestyle and be consistent about it i tell myself also to not take the weight too seriously and that it is better to be a little bit chubby okay because having a little bit of meat on you actually makes you look younger as per what i have been observing with all of my friends and everybody in my age that a little bit more meat makes you look younger as opposed to if you're very skinny you actually look a lot older so that's the kind of advice i would give my 25 year old self to maintain a more youthful appearance as i get older on the other hand i would also tell my 25 year old self to save more money definitely i would say that it's okay you know to enjoy life to experience life but you need to start preparing for when you get older okay you need to start preparing for emergencies you need to start using your brain more than your heart okay and you need to be just better prepared be a better steward of god's financial blessings toward you i'd also tell my 25 year old self to not put your Erica, your whole heart and soul into the job that you are in and to have a fallback okay to not put all of your coins in your employment if that make sense but like not to invest your absolute 100 percent self in your employment and not be open to any other opportunities and what i mean by that and this is the kind of advice also that i'm giving to my children is that i don't mean that you should have a business on the side because having a business or being a negotiante doesn't always necessarily spell success as well and i mean that has its different kinds of pains that's also as unstable as employment is okay businesses can go down the drain any minute um it has birthing pains and the thing with business having a business is that it's yours so for me that would be even like a lot more stressful than having a job and being employed because you can shut off your job you know when you come home at 6 p.m 7 p.m you can shut that off and then just turn it back on at 9 a.m 10 a.m the following day but like i have people in my life that have businesses of their own and they're not shut off okay so i'm not the kind of person who would have a business um I, it's just really not for me but when i say to my 25 year old self have a fallback i would say develop a skill or study a skill and own a skill that will never be out of demand and that you can fall back on in case employment doesn't work for example like china i think i've already set her up in school in college she studied multimedia design so she has the skill she has the ability to do graphic design to do the different kinds of multimedia design but that's not her job now because the job that she wanted to get into was into pr so she's in pr she's working with a pr agency okay but let's say she loses her job any minute oh god knock on wood that she doesn't but let's say that she does and she doesn't have this job then she has a backup skill she can be a graphic artist a graphic designer she can do that freelance right she can edit your videos for you thank you for editing mine <laughs> China, you know for free love you but anyway you know she can edit videos she can do do it on her own freelance she can still earn 
okay even if she is not tied to a particular job so that's what i would tell myself um, if I could talk to my younger self. So unfortunately, I don't have a backup skill like that. Um, I'm fortunate enough, enough to be employed, but if I weren't employed, oh, I don't know what I'd be doing, you know, um, to, to earn money. So guys in your 20s, you may want to listen to that piece of advice from your tita. <laughs> so that's the truth about aging. That is what you are going to experience when you hit 40 years old, and that's also the advice I have for you if you're still in your 20s and your 30s and you want to hear from someone who's already fighting too. And now it's time for my fun Filipino word of the day. So my fun Filipino word of the day is baguettes. Baguettes means young. <laughs> baguettes is used to describe people who are young or in their teens or in their early 20s. You can say mga baguettes. Those people are baguettes. Th that term, in case you guys, my young subscribers didn't know, was actually coined from a movie in the 80s, a local Filipino movie starring actors like Yayo Agala and Francis Magalona and others, you know this. And they were still young and it was about this barcada and the, the movie is called Baguettes because they were all young. So, you know like the cast in Stranger Things? You can call them mga baguettes. <laughs> okay? So people who have turned 40, we are no longer baguettes. But most of us do have our own baguettes. <laughs> That's a fun Filipino word of the day. Baguettes. And my shout out today goes to Miss Rowie Bermudez. I hope you're watching this. Hello Miss Beautiful. Thank you for all of your support on my Instagram as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're one of my friends watching, hello, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well. Anyway, I come out with my new videos every Sunday. If you haven't followed me also on Instagram yet, please do. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay.